Joan Fontaine, and her sister, also an actress, had a complicated relationship that began in their childhood. Their rivalry extended to their careers, love lives, and even the Academy Awards. Fontaine's sister won two Oscars, while Fontaine took home one, leading to further tension between them. The two talented sisters were often pitted against each other in Hollywood, creating a complex dynamic that lasted for decades. Olivia and her sister Joan, also an actress, were childhood rivals. This rivalry began as a competition for their mother's affections and developed into a lifelong feud. The tension between the two was so great that Joan even changed her last name from de Havilland to Fontaine in order to distance herself from her sister. Despite their strained relationship, both sisters found success in the film industry. Olivia was known for her roles in films such as Gone with the Wind and The Heiress, while Joan starred in classics like Rebecca and Suspicion. The sisters' rivalry was not limited to their personal lives. They also competed for roles in Hollywood, with each striving to outshine the other. This competition only served to fuel their feud and create a divide between them that would last for decades. Despite the animosity between them, both Olivia and Joan went on to have successful careers in the film industry. They each made a name for themselves and will always be remembered as two of the most talented actresses of their time. In the end, the rivalry between Olivia and Joan de Havilland serves as a reminder of the complex relationships that can exist between siblings, even those who have achieved great success in their respective fields. Born to a British patent attorney, the actress and her sister Joan moved to California in 1919 with their mother. The actress, still in her teenage years, was discovered by a local production and was chosen to play the role of Hermia in a 1935 Warner Brothers film version of A Midsummer Night's Dream. This marked the beginning of her illustrious film career. The actress's natural talent and captivating screen presence quickly caught the attention of audiences and critics alike. She continued to land significant roles in various films throughout the 1930s and 1940s, further solidifying her status as a talented and accomplished actress. Her early career was marked by her versatility and range as she excelled in both dramatic and comedic roles. Despite facing various challenges and setbacks, the actress remained committed to her craft and continued to push boundaries in the world of film. In the 1930s and 40s, the actress became known for her many appearances in costume adventure movies. Audiences delighted in her performances in films such as Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood, where she brought to life characters that were both strong and feminine. Her on-screen chemistry with leading men was undeniable, and she quickly became a sought-after romantic lead. In Strawberry Blonde, the actress played a charming and flirtatious character who won over the hearts of many viewers. Her performance was nuanced and captivating, showcasing her ability to bring depth and complexity to her roles. Similarly, in Gone with the Wind, she played a gentle and compassionate character who provided a stark contrast to the more dramatic and larger-than-life personalities around her. Despite the challenges of working in a male-dominated industry, the actress held her own, earning critical acclaim and a devoted fan base. Her contributions to the world of film are still celebrated today, and her legacy continues to resonate with audiences around the world. It's no wonder that she remains a beloved figure in the annals of Hollywood history. Olivia de Havilland, an accomplished actress, grew discontent with the romantic roles assigned to her by Warner Brothers. She longed for more substantial parts, leading to conflicts with the studio. In an act of defiance, she refused to act in any film after her contract ended, despite the studio's attempts to extend it. The actress's contract stipulated that she was required to act in any film that the studio assigned to her for a period of six months after her contract ended. However, de Havilland argued that the clause was only applicable if she had been employed continuously during the term of her contract. The studio disagreed, leading to a legal battle. In 1945, the case made it to the California Supreme Court, where de Havilland emerged victorious. The court ruled in her favor, setting a precedent that significantly altered the way studios treated their contract players. The decision limited the amount of time that studios could extend the contracts of their actors and gave actors more control over their careers. De Havilland's legal battle with Warner Brothers was a pivotal moment in Hollywood history. 
It marked a turning point in the relationship between studios and their contract players, giving actors more power and autonomy in their careers. The actress's courage and determination in standing up for her rights paved the way for future generations of actors to do the same. Driven by a desire to prove herself and outshine her sister Joan, the actress pursued more substantial roles. Joan had already won an Oscar in 1942 for Suspicion, which further fueled her ambition. Finally, in 1947, the actress's hard work paid off when she won the Oscar for To Each His Own, a poignant film about a woman who gives up her child for adoption and later regrets her decision. The actress's second Oscar win came in 1949 for her role in The Heiress, a drama set in the late 1950s about a young woman who falls in love with a man who may not be all he seems. The actress's portrayal of the shy and vulnerable heiress was widely praised, and her win was well-deserved. These Oscar wins were significant for the actress, not only because they validated her talent and hard work, but also because they allowed her to step out of her sister's shadow. The actress had long been compared to Joan, who had achieved success earlier in her career. However, with these Oscar wins, the actress established herself as a talented and accomplished actress in her own right. In conclusion, the actress's Oscar aspirations and wins were a testament to her determination, talent, and passion for her craft. Her journey to win an Oscar before her sister drove her to take on more challenging roles and ultimately led to her success in the film industry. The rivalry between the two sisters, both actresses, was a popular topic in the press during their heyday. The film industry was abuzz with stories of their feud which became a subject of public fascination. However, Joan later downplayed the extent of their rivalry, insisting that they had never really quarreled. Despite Joan's claims, their clashes as children were well documented. The two girls often engaged in physical fights, with slaps and hair pulling being common occurrences. Additionally, they accused their mother of showing favoritism towards one over the other, which only served to fuel their animosity. The roots of their rivalry can be traced back to their childhood. Growing up, the two girls were constantly compared to each other, with their mother often praising Olivia for her grace and poise. This led to a sense of jealousy and competition between the two, which would persist throughout their lives. Despite their differences, both sisters went on to have successful acting careers. Olivia became known for her roles in classic films such as Gone with the Wind, while Joan made a name for herself in comedies and dramas. However, their rivalry continued to follow them wherever they went, with the press always eager to report on their latest clash. In the end, the two sisters remained estranged for many years, with their feud becoming one of the most famous in Hollywood history. Despite this, both actresses left an indelible mark on the film industry, with their contributions continuing to resonate with audiences to this day. In a 1942 Life magazine profile, the tension between two famous Hollywood sisters was laid bare. The younger sister, known as Joan Fontaine but originally named Joan de Havilland, revealed that she had once considered killing her older sister in self-defense. The older sister, who was already an established actress at the time, was none other than Olivia de Havilland. Joan had spent much of her early career living in Olivia's shadow. Both sisters had started out in Hollywood around the same time, but Olivia had quickly become a star. She had appeared in a string of successful films, including Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood, and had become one of the most popular actresses in Hollywood. Joan, on the other hand, had struggled to find her footing. She had initially followed in her sister's footsteps, taking on similar roles and trying to emulate Olivia's success. But she had failed to make a name for herself and had grown increasingly frustrated with being seen as Olivia's little sister. The source of much of this frustration was Joan's name change. In an effort to distance herself from her sister and forge her own identity, Joan had changed her last name from de Havilland to Fontaine. But the name change had only served to deepen the rift between the two sisters. Olivia had been hurt and angry that Joan had chosen to abandon their shared family name and the two had grown increasingly distant as a Rizu lieutenant to make matters worse. Joan had been forced to play the role of chauffeur to her sister during the early years of their careers. Olivia had never learned to drive, and so it had fallen to Joan to ferry her sister around Hollywood. This had only added to Joan's feelings of resentment and bitterness and had fueled her desire to break free from Olivia's shadow and make a name for herself. 
Despite these challenges, Joan had eventually found success in her own right. She had won an Academy Award for her role in the film Suspicion and had gone on to appear in a number of other successful films. But the bitterness and resentment she had felt towards her sister had never fully disappeared. In the end, the rift between the two sisters had never fully healed. Despite their shared history and their many similarities, they had grown apart over the years, each pursuing their own careers and their own paths. And while they had both found success in their own ways, the shadow of their troubled relationship had always lingered over them, a reminder of the challenges and struggles they had faced along the way. The talented actress, known for her work in films like Gone with the Wind, found herself in competition with her own sister in the world of Hollywood. Both sisters pursued acting and quickly became rivals in the industry. While one sister achieved success in films such as Rebecca, the other's career continued to soar with leading roles in the heiress and to each his own, earning her two Academy Awards. Their rivalry was evident during the 1942 Academy Awards ceremony. As the actress walked up to her sister to offer congratulations on her nomination, it seemed as if her sister deliberately ignored her. This snub was a clear indication of the tension between the two sisters and their ongoing rivalry. Despite the cold shoulder, the actress continued to make her mark in the film industry, appearing in over 40 films throughout her career. Her contributions to the world of cinema will always be remembered, even as her rivalry with her sister remains a topic of interest among film enthusiasts. The actress's marriage to a man who had previously courted her close friend and rival was a significant event that added fuel to their long-standing feud. The two leading ladies had been friends since their early days in Hollywood, but their relationship became strained when one of them married the other's former flame. The tension between the two women was palpable, and their rivalry only intensified as they continued to work in the same industry. Despite this, they managed to maintain a fragile peace for many years, never allowing their personal feelings to interfere with their professional obligations. However, the final straw came when their mother died in 1975. The actress was devastated by the loss, and she reached out to her former friend to offer her condolences. Unfortunately, her overture was rejected, and the two women did not speak again for over 35 years. The actress was deeply hurt by this turn of events, but she refused to let it consume her. Instead, she channeled her energy into her work, continuing to captivate audiences with her powerful performances in film and television. Despite the pain of their estrangement, the actress never lost her respect for her former friend's talents. She recognized that they had both made significant contributions to the world of entertainment and that their rivalry had helped to push them to greater heights. It was only in the twilight of their lives that the two women finally reconciled. The actress was grateful for this opportunity to heal the wounds of the past and to reconnect with her old friend. Although their relationship would never be the same, she was proud of the way they had managed to overcome their differences and find common ground. In the end, the actress's story is a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of forgiveness. Despite the challenges and setbacks she faced throughout her career, she never lost sight of her goals or her values. And although her rivalry with her former friend was a source of pain and sorrow, it also served as a catalyst for growth and self-discovery. The strained relationship between the two sisters, both actresses, was evident at the time of Joan's death. Despite occasional moments of closeness over the years, they were ultimately estranged. The roots of their animosity can be traced back to Joan's 1978 memoir, No Bed of Roses, in which she revealed her deep-seated resentments towards her sister. In the memoir, Joan pulled back the curtain on their relationship, expressing her feelings of betrayal and hurt. She declared that she did not see or intend to see Olivia, comparing their relationship to a divorce. The publication of the memoir marked a turning point in their relationship, further deepening the rift between them. Despite the public nature of Joan's grievances, the two sisters never fully reconciled. In the years that followed, they made only occasional public statements about each other, often through the media. These statements were typically guarded and revealed little about the true state of their relationship. In the end, the estrangement between the two sisters was a complex and multifaceted issue rooted in a combination of personal and professional factors. Despite their shared history and background, they were ultimately unable to overcome their differences and find common ground. The legacy of their relationship 
marked by resentment and distance serves as a reminder of the challenges and complexities of sibling relationships in the public eye. In 1979, at an Oscars reunion, the actress found herself and her longtime rival, Joan, placed on separate ends of the stage. It was later revealed that Joan had even changed hotel rooms to avoid any potential interaction with the actress. Despite the tension between them, the actress expressed a great deal of sadness after Joan's death many years later. She stated that any defensiveness on her part was due to her own feelings, but she always held loving feelings towards Joan. It is a reminder that even in the world of Hollywood, where rivalries and competition can run high, there is still room for compassion and understanding. In the star-studded world of Hollywood, few have shone as brightly as Olivia de Havilland. Born on July 1, 1916, in Tokyo, Japan, she would later move to California and discover her passion for acting. De Havilland's career took flight in the 1930s when she signed with Warner Brothers and her natural talent and captivating screen presence quickly made her a household name. Throughout her illustrious career, Olivia de Havilland starred in numerous iconic films, including Gone with the Wind and The Heiress, for which she won her first and second Academy Awards. Her portrayal of complex characters, such as Melanie Hamilton and Catherine Sloper, showcased her incredible range and versatility as an actress. De Havilland's impact on the film industry extends beyond her accolades and unforgettable roles. In 1943, she made history by challenging Warner Brothers in a landmark legal battle, which ultimately led to significant reforms in Hollywood contract law. This groundbreaking achievement not only transformed the lives of countless actors, but also reshaped the entertainment industry as a whole. Olivia de Havilland's legacy continues to inspire and influence generations of actors and filmmakers. Her unwavering dedication to her craft and her relentless pursuit of justice have left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Even today, her extraordinary body of work serves as a testament to her enduring talent and enduring influence. Born on July 1, 1916, in Tokyo, Japan, to British parents, Olivia de Havilland was the daughter of a renowned professor and an actress. She spent her early years in Tokyo before moving to California at the age of two. Her sister, Joan Fontaine, also became a successful actress. The sisters' competitive yet supportive relationship inspired both of them to excel in their careers. De Havilland's mother, Lillian Fontaine, was a significant influence on her early exposure to acting. Lillian often performed in amateur theater productions, and Olivia would sometimes join her on stage. This early exposure to acting sparked De Havilland's interest in the craft. De Havilland's family encouraged her to pursue acting and she began her career in high school plays. She later attended Mills College in California, where she continued to act in college productions. It was during this time that she was discovered by a talent scout and offered a contract with Warner Brothers once she began working in Hollywood. De Havilland was influenced by several mentors, including her first acting coach, actress Max Reinhardt. Reinhardt cast De Havilland in her first professional role as Hermia in his production of A Midsummer Night's Dream in 1935. De Havilland's performance was a critical success, and she quickly became a sought-after actress in Hollywood. Another significant influence on De Havilland's career was her co-star and friend, Errol Flynn. The two actors starred in eight films together, including Captain Blood and The Adventures of Robin Hood. Flynn encouraged De Havilland to take on more challenging roles and to demand better treatment from the studio. De Havilland's determination to succeed in Hollywood and her willingness to stand up for herself and her craft set her apart from her peers. She was known for her professionalism, her dedication to her craft, and her commitment to fighting for actors' rights. These qualities, along with her exceptional talent, made Olivia de Havilland one of the most influential actresses of her time. Ever since Olivia de Havilland was a young girl, she was drawn to the magical world of theater. At the age of four, she and her sister watched a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream and were enchanted. This experience etched a deep impression on Olivia, fueling her passion for acting. During her teenage years, Olivia's interest in drama grew stronger. She participated in school plays and blossomed under the guidance of her drama teacher, who recognized her potential and encouraged her to pursue acting professionally. In 1933, when Olivia was just 18 years old, 
she landed her first major role in a production of Alice in Wonderland. Her performance was a resounding success, and she knew then that she had found her calling. Olivia's big break came in 1935 when she was discovered by a Hollywood talent scout and offered a contract with Warner Brothers. She moved to California and began her film career, quickly becoming one of the most sought after actresses of her time. Throughout her long and illustrious career, Olivia de Havilland has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Her passion for acting has never waned and she continues to inspire and captivate audiences to this day. Olivia de Havilland, a name synonymous with resilience and determination, faced numerous challenges early on in her career. Born on July 1, 1916, in Tokyo, Japan, to British parents, de Havilland's family moved to California when she was just three years old. Financial struggles plagued the de Havilland family, and Olivia's mother, Lillian, worked tirelessly to provide for her children. Despite these hardships, Lillian recognized her daughter's talent and enrolled her in the Saratoga Drama Association when Olivia was only 16. However, the road to stardom was not an easy one for de Havilland. She faced skepticism from industry insiders who doubted her abilities and questioned her commitment to acting. Undeterred, de Havilland persevered, taking on small roles in local theater productions and working as an extra in films. In 1935, de Havilland's big break came when she was discovered by legendary director Max Reinhardt, who cast her in his film adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Despite her limited acting experience, de Havilland held her own alongside seasoned actors like James Cagney and Mickey Rooney. Yet, even after her successful film debut, de Havilland continued to face obstacles in the industry. She was often typecast in romantic roles and struggled to break free from this narrow perception of her talents. Determined to prove herself as a serious actress, de Havilland took on more challenging roles, including her iconic portrayal of Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind. Her nuance and heartfelt performance earned her critical acclaim and solidified her place in Hollywood. Throughout her career, de Havilland continued to push boundaries and challenge stereotypes. She fought for better roles for women and was a vocal advocate for actors' rights, even taking her own studio to court over the issue of contract disputes. In the end, de Havilland's resilience and determination paid off. She went on to win two Academy Awards and became one of the most respected actresses of her time. Her legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors and serves as a testament to the power of perseverance and determination. Olivia de Havilland's breakthrough moments are marked by groundbreaking projects and critical acclaim that have left an indelible mark on the film industry. In 1935, she catapulted to fame with her role as Maid Marian in The Adventures of Robin Hood, where her chemistry with co-star Errol Flynn was palpable. The film's director, Michael Curtis, praised de Havilland's natural grace and charm, which he believed contributed significantly to the film's success. In 1939, de Havilland delivered a powerful performance in Gone with the Wind, earning her first Academy Award nomination. Her portrayal of Melanie Hamilton Wilkes, a gentle and selfless character, resonated with audiences and critics alike. The film's director, Victor Fleming, noted that de Havilland's subtlety and depth brought the character to life, leaving a lasting impact on cinema. De Havilland's career reached new heights in 1946 when she starred into each his own a poignant drama about a woman's struggle for love and acceptance. De Havilland's nuanced performance earned her the first of two Academy Awards for Best Actress. Critics hailed her as a revelation, showcasing her versatility and range as an actress. In 1949, De Havilland delivered another standout performance in The Heiress, a period drama about a young woman's quest for love and independence. Her portrayal of Catherine Sloper, a complex and conflicted character, earned her a second Academy Award for Best Actress. Critics and audiences alike were captivated by her masterful performance, cementing her status as a Hollywood icon. Throughout her career, Olivia de Havilland has left an enduring legacy in the film industry, with her breakthrough moments forever etched in the annals of cinema history. Her contributions have transcended generations, inspiring countless actors and filmmakers to this day. Olivia de Havilland, a legendary actress, was known for her unique approach to work and distinctive style. She once stated, I've always believed that one should become a character, not just play it. 
This philosophy shaped her creative process, leading her to deeply analyze and inhabit her roles. De Havilland's artistic vision was deeply rooted in her personal experiences and worldview. Raised in a family of actors, she developed a profound respect for the craft at a young age. Her tumultuous relationship with her sister, Joan Fontaine, also seeped into her work, often portraying complex and conflicted characters. Her upbringing in Japan and England exposed her to diverse cultures, which influenced her open-mindedness and versatility. She once shared, My childhood was spent in Japan and Europe, and I feel these early influences have given me a very international outlook. B. Haviland's artistic process was meticulous and introspective. She would immerse herself in the script, studying every line and nuance. She once revealed, I read the script over and over again until I feel I've become the character. This dedication to her craft resulted in unforgettable performances, such as Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind. Her unique style was characterized by her ability to convey vulnerability and strength simultaneously. She once stated, I've always been drawn to characters who possess a quiet strength, even in the face of adversity. This is evident in her portrayal of Catherine Sloper in The Heiress, where she embodies a woman struggling to find her voice in a patriarchal society. De Havilland's personal experiences and worldview were reflected in her work, often portraying strong-willed and resilient women. Her own battles, including a groundbreaking legal case against Warner Brothers, further solidified her reputation as a trailblazer and a symbol of perseverance. In conclusion, Olivia de Havilland's artistic vision and process were deeply intertwined with her personal experiences and worldview. Her unique approach to her craft and distinctive style have left an indelible mark on the world of cinema, inspiring generations of actors and film enthusiasts alike. Olivia de Havilland, a legendary actress, left an indelible mark on the film industry. She began her career in the 1930s, starring in films like Captain Blood and Gone with the Wind. Her performances were nuanced, often challenging societal norms and expectations. De Havilland was a pioneer in many ways. She was instrumental in changing the studio system, fighting for actors' rights, and influencing the California Labor Code. This led to the end of long-term contracts, giving actors more freedom and control over their careers. Her influence extended to storytelling as well. De Havilland was known for her versatility, playing a wide range of characters. She could portray strength and vulnerability with equal conviction, challenging stereotypes, and paving the way for complex female characters. Industry expert and film historian Jeanine Basinger commented on de Havilland's impact. She brought a new kind of modern woman to the screen, one who was intelligent, independent, and unafraid to challenge authority. De Havilland's influence is also felt in the acting techniques she employed. She was known for her meticulous preparation and naturalistic style, which was a departure from the overly dramatic acting common in her time. This approach has since become the norm in Hollywood. Actress Dame Judi Dench, who was inspired by de Havilland, shared her thoughts. Olivia's ability to convey emotion through subtle gestures and expressions was revolutionary. She showed us all that less is often more. In addition to her acting and advocacy, de Havilland was also a style icon. Her elegant fashion sense, both on and off the screen, set trends and influenced fashion for generations. In conclusion, Olivia de Havilland's contribution to the film industry is immeasurable. Her acting, activism, and style have left a lasting impact, influencing trends, techniques, and storytelling in Hollywood. Olivia de Havilland, the legendary actress, was known for her work in films such as Gone with the Wind and The Heiress, but her life extended far beyond the silver screen. De Havilland was passionate about various causes and philanthropic efforts, which greatly informed her work and personal life. Born in Tokyo, Japan, in 1916, de Havilland moved to California with her family at a young age. She developed a love for acting and theater during her time at Mills College in Oakland. After being discovered by a Warner Brothers talent scout, de Havilland's professional career took off. De Havilland's personal values and interests were deeply intertwined with her work as an actress. She was a strong advocate for artists' rights and fought against the studio system's oppressive contracts. In 1943, she took Warner Brothers to court and won, paving the way for other actors to gain more control over their careers. 
In addition to her advocacy for artist rights, de Havilland was also passionate about various charitable causes. She was a longtime supporter of the United Nations Children's Fund and the American Cancer Society. De Havilland's philanthropic efforts extended to the arts as well, as she served as a board member for the Los Angeles Music Center and the Hollywood Bowl. De Havilland's personal values and interests also informed her work as an actress. She was known for her strong, independent female characters, such as Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind and Catherine Sloper in The Heiress. These roles resonated with audiences and solidified de Havilland's status as a Hollywood icon. In her later years, de Havilland continued to be an active member of the community. She was appointed a Dane Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 2017 for her services to drama. De Havilland passed away in 2020 at the age of 104, leaving behind a legacy as a trailblazer in the entertainment industry and a dedicated philanthropist. Olivia de Havilland, a legendary actress, has left an indelible mark on the film industry. With a career spanning over five decades, she became a symbol of grace and talent, earning two Academy Awards for her powerful performances. Her portrayal of Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind remains one of the most cherished roles in cinema history. De Havilland's advice for aspiring professionals is as valuable today as it was during her time. She once said, Never doubt that you are valuable and powerful and deserving of every chance in the world to pursue your dreams. This empowering message encourages aspiring actors to believe in themselves and their abilities. Additionally, de Havilland emphasized the importance of perseverance and hard work. I always believed that my future was ahead of me and that if I worked very hard and combined that hard work with a certain amount of talent, I could do anything. This inspiring outlook highlights the significance of dedication and tenacity in achieving one's goals. In terms of her future contributions, de Havilland continued to be a trailblazer even after retiring from acting. She successfully sued Warner Brothers in 1943, challenging the studio's contractual rights to extend her contract due to suspension periods. This landmark decision, known as the de Havilland Law, revolutionized the film industry and granted actors greater creative freedom and control over their careers. In conclusion, Olivia de Havilland's legacy serves as a testament to the power of determination, resilience, and self-belief. Her advice for aspiring professionals is to embrace their unique talents, work tirelessly towards their dreams, and never lose sight of their self-worth. By following in her footsteps, future generations of actors can continue to make a lasting impact on the industry and beyond. Olivia de Havilland's journey in the entertainment industry serves as a powerful testament to the potential of creativity and perseverance. Born in 1916, she pursued her passion for acting from a young age, eventually making her film debut in 1935. De Havilland quickly gained recognition for her talent, starring in numerous iconic films throughout her career. Her groundbreaking portrayal of Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind showcased her remarkable acting skills and cemented her status as a Hollywood star. However, de Havilland's impact extended beyond her on-screen performances. She was a trailblazer for actors' rights, challenging the studio system and winning a landmark legal case that changed the industry forever. de Havilland's innovative spirit and unwavering determination left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. Her impressive body of work, which includes classics like The Heiress, and to each his own, continues to resonate with audiences today. Even as she aged, de Havilland never lost her passion for acting, proving that creativity and artistry have no expiration date. In her later years, de Havilland remained a vital and relevant figure in the industry, receiving numerous accolades for her contributions. Her enduring impact is a reminder of the power of creativity and the importance of standing up for one's beliefs. Olivia de Havilland's journey serves as an inspiration for aspiring artists and a shining example of the heights one can reach through passion, innovation, and perseverance. Without a doubt, Olivia de Havilland was a trailblazer in Hollywood. With two Academy Awards to her name, she left an indelible mark on the film industry. Her work in classics such as Gone with the Wind and The Heiress showcased her remarkable acting prowess. De Havilland was born on July 1, 1916, in Tokyo, Japan, to British parents. She started her career in the late 1930s and quickly became a household name. Her feud with her sister, Joan Fontaine, 
added an intriguing layer to her personal life, which often resonated in her work. Throughout her career, de Havilland challenged the status quo and fought for actors' rights. She was instrumental in ending the studio system's contractual servitude, which allowed actors more freedom and control over their careers. As we reflect on de Havilland's life and work, we can't help but appreciate her enduring impact on the entertainment industry. Her legacy is etched in the annals of film history, inspiring generations of actors and filmmakers. Now, we'd love to hear your thoughts on Olivia de Havilland's work and legacy. What are your favorite films or performances of hers? Share your memories and opinions in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content celebrating the creative spirits shaping entertainment.